Hey, what's going on everybody? Gus here. How are you guys doing today? So this is the drop enter. Actually, this is the drop enter. The de facto entry level mechanical keyboard from drop that doesn't really complete the set with the control and the alt because that would mean it would have to be named delete. <laughs> that would have been delicious. But it does at least get drop into the run for being a one-stop shop, for being the place where you could very well get from your very first mechanical keyboard to your first upgrade, like enthusiast level pre-made board, like a control or an alt. And eventually they're going to be the one-stop shop for you to get everything you need for full custom builds. And I mean, that's a lot already, jeez. Alrighty, so entry level mechanical. That means it's all about the pricing. The enter comes in six different options for you to choose from, all of them priced at $90, which is $160 cheaper than the other high profile TKL keyboard that drop sells, the control, and $140 cheaper than the alt, which is a 65% board. And yeah, of course, you could compare the enter to the normal versions of the control and the alt, but that would still mean a $110 and $90 difference, respectively. Now, between all those six options, you have actually two choices to make. One is in regard to switches, the other, the color of your keyboard. When it comes to switches, you can go for either getter on yellows, which are linear and basically feel like any other linear offering from Gateron, really. Or you could go for Halo Trues, which are tactile, and by themselves, they're going to be one of the best selling points for this keyboard, like alone. For starters, because a pack of 110 switches is like 55 bucks, all on their own. And actually, going a little bit further into it, they are extremely impressive with excellent tactile feedback, both being fast and responsive on the way down as you actuate and try to bottom out with extra resistance at the very end and a fast and responsive reset profile, which makes typing on them, it's a really good experience. And in a pre-made board like this, you can only get them in Drop's own keyboards. Plus they actually are a part of the recipe for the famous Holy Panda switches, which means absolutely nothing in this context, but uh, I mean, it's just curiosity, I guess. Too bad that it's not the quietest keyboard ever because yes, the switches are awesome, but they would benefit from being lubed and the stabilizers would definitely benefit from being lubed, which is why I'm going to try and find a way to do something about it. And no, I did not expect anything that much different for this price tag, especially because both the control and the alt already have a bit of a reputation for both being sort of high-ish end keyboards that deliver excellent quality across the board, except for the stabilizers. As for colors, you have either black with black keycaps, green with two-tone gray keycaps, or silver. I mean, drop. we need to talk because this is the back portion of your keyboard. Yes, this is aluminum, this is silver. This is what you're going to be looking at. This is the thing that's going to be facing you. So this is white. I mean, white keycaps, white frame, doesn't matter if this is silver or not, this is a white keyboard, okay? Just so you got naming scheme, please. Just pay attention to the details. As for the rest of the build, as we just saw, the case itself is aluminum with discrete rubber feet on the bottom with a single step for you know height adjustment. The PCB is custom designed, so it does not match what you would find on a TKL control board, and it does not support hot swap. Unlike the control and the alt, there's only one USB-C port on the back left side of the case, which is flush 
to the outside. So zero compatibility issues with any aftermarket cables or custom cables that you might want to use. The keycaps are double shot PBT, so they will probably last you forever with a good texture that's not too coarse, not too smooth, and with elegant, well-designed, simple, clear, big fonts that will complement both the design of the entire keyboard and help with the illumination. The top plate is plastic and color-coded to the rest of the keyboard, so black, green, and white. And to help with the illumination, yes, the top part is matte and lightly textured, but the inside walls of the plastic frame are actually a bit glossy, which helps spreading that light a little bit. Now, as for the illumination itself, as with most keyboards, if not absolutely all of them, there are always a couple of faults. There's always something missing. There are always a couple of keys that don't shine through exactly the way that should. Absolutely every keyboard suffers from this, and it is still the case with the Enter, but here, it manifests itself a little bit differently. Instead of having certain keys with the illumination not being super consistent across the entire character, the Enter actually has a little bit of a shift in hue. From what I've seen in pictures, both the black and the green versions of the Enter flat out look like they have yellow or yellow-ish illumination. And all of the six variants officially only have white lighting. And I mean, you guys can clearly see that it's not the case. It's not exactly white, or at least not exactly white across the entire keyboard. Now this is apparently caused both because of the keycaps and because of the switches underneath and their respective housings. So depending on how dead set you are on having a white, like pure white light on your keyboard, that could be a very big deterrent for you to actually choose to go for the Enter. Oh, and since white is the only illumination available, in case you're wondering how would you know if you have caps lock on or off, well, just look for the bright sun beaming from your keyboard because it's much brighter than every other keycap when it's turned on. Now, despite this being an entry-level keyboard, Drop has been hard at work on it for a long time actually engaging and asking for both feedback from the community and reviewers and trying to iron out every little detail that wasn't up to spec or up to par to what they envisioned the Enter should be in order to get everything okay for the launch. And I'm super glad to say that that is exactly what they did. This second unit that you guys are seeing in this shot right now opened up is a pre-production model they sent over for feedback back in May. And everything that was critical to be resolved from then to now to get everything you know perfect for the launch or as perfect as it can be, was indeed worked on and improved, which is awesome. This is a really good road to see drop on. So in conclusion, despite having seen some complaints online about quality control issues, especially with the green version, the white and the, the black seems to be less affected and the white seems to not have been affected at all, or at least I haven't seen anyone with the white variant actually complaining, or maybe that's just because most of the people didn't get the plain white since you have the other options either way. But I really don't see this being that much of a big problem for drop to actually solve rather quickly. And in the end, you're left with a keyboard that in regards to the overall quality is definitely delivering on its promise. It feels extremely robust, just like its brethren. Build and materials are nice. I like the switch options and the color options, especially with the Halo True switches being one of the options because you know using them is like really nice. But at this price, the market actually has very little other options that check all the same boxes. You will find mechanical keyboards around the $90 price range and below, but then comes in that phrase, you know, you get what you pay for. And in those particular comparisons, that phrase isn't boding well for most of the other brands when facing the Enter. So as long as you're not 100% turned off by the yellowish hue and the inconsistency in the lighting, I would definitely tell you guys to consider the Enter as one of the best options for budget mechanical keyboards out there in the market as it has very little missing from it and everything that is here is basically top-notch quality in the category. And that's been it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, so like, subscribe, hit the bell, and leave any comments or suggestions down below as usual if you're feeling like it. Thanks a lot for watching. This is Gus, and I'll catch you guys later.